Shalom, shalom. Welcome to the Yeshiva Perkei Shoshanim B'nai Noah class. I am Devon, and we are here with Tiho. And today we're going to be talking about theft according to the seven laws of Noah. So um, let me share my screen. Can y'all see my screen? Yep. All right. So today we're going to be talking about theft. Like I said, we know uh, theft is one of the seven laws of Noah. It's found throughout the Torah, uh, especially in the book of Genesis, where the laws originate. Um, and uh, let's get right into it. Um, Genesis 6, 11. The earth was also corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Now, a lot of translations say robbery. Excuse me which would, you know, entail violence when you're stealing, when you're robbing somebody, you're practically stealing from them, uh, which is a violent act or can be a violent act, you know, especially if it's like an armed robbery. Proverbs 21 and 7 tells us the robbery of the wicked shall destroy them because they refuse to do judgment. So we see even in the book of Proverbs, ro robbery is brought up with the same context of something that is not allowed and it's something that the wicked people do genesis 30 and 33 so shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come when it shall come for my hire because before thy face everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the sheep that shall be counted stolen with me so we know the story of jacob and laban jacob is tending to laban's flocks in the herds and um he talks about if something is not accounted for, it will be counted as stolen for, from, uh, for Jacob. Genesis 31 and 9, and Laban went to share his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. So we know Laban worshipped idols, and uh, Rachel stole her father's idols. Um, some say she did it so her father would stop worshipping idols, because there's, we don't see any instance of her actually worshipping the idols, but she took them from her father and of course, he's upset and comes and questions Jacob about where they have gone after he had took uh, his wives and ran away from Laban. Genesis 40 and 15, for indeed, I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews. And here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. So we see here the concept of stealing what we refer to people, uh, what we call kidnapping. Uh, Joseph is saying that he was kidnapped out of the land of the Hebrews when they took him up out the pit and brought him to Egypt. So kidnapping and theft is pretty, pretty much, they're not exactly the same, but the concept is, and even in the Ten Commandments, when it says thou shalt not steal, it's really referring to kidnapping based on the language. Now, I know many people are not aware of that, but when you go into the Hebrew, the concept of thou shalt not steal in the Ten Commandments is really referring to stealing people. Um, we know, of course, re regular theft or, you know, stealing of objects is and also in, in the Tanakh or in the Torah, but specifically in the Ten Commandments that most people are aware of, that concept is talking about stealing people or kidnapping. Genesis 44 and 8, behold, the money which, is, which we found in our sack's mouth we brought again unto thee out of the land of Canaan. How then should we steal out of our Lord's house silver and gold? So when the brothers are dealing with Joseph, when they visit him in Egypt, um, he accuses them of stealing um, his, uh, his goblet or his cup that he divines with. Um, we know it's a little bit more detail to that story, but they're saying, how, how could we do such a thing? Why would we steal when we paid you money? You know, we, 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 we gave you money. You, you put it back in, in our sacks, um, but we would not have stolen from you. Genesis 44 and 9. With whomsoever of your servants it is found, let him die. And also we will be my Lord's slaves. So after they realize that someone has stolen from Joseph, we see they are already looking at the judgment of it would be a death sentence to be stealing in this in this context in this time frame because the people knew the laws of the land that um, this could be punishable by death. Job twenty four and two, 
there are those who move boundary stones. They pasture flocks they have stolen. So we see people who are stealing land by moving the boundary stone, taking something that doesn't belong to you, right? You're, moving, you're increasing your, your land by moving the boundary stones, which would be a form of theft or stealing. And they're pasturing flocks that they have stolen. So in the ancient world, people were very well aware of stealing things and taking things that don't belong to them, be it land, people, or objects, you know, herds, flocks, something of that nature. Job 24 and 14, when daylight is gone, the murderer rises up, kills the poor and needy, and in the night steals forth like a thief. Psalm 62 and 10, do not trust in extortion or put vain hope in stolen goods. Do, though your rich increases, though your riches increases, do not set your heart on them. So basically it's telling you when you are a thief, don't count on that stolen money. It's not going to work out good for you. You're going to get a you're going to get a punishment for that money. And that money is not going to it's not going to save you in your time of trouble. And actually, the things that you steal, you're not going to be able to enjoy this. We see this concept all over, all over the Torah that one of the punishments that um, Solomon tells us is that God gives a man riches, but he does not let the, him enjoy those riches if he's a wicked person. Because even though you might be stealing all these things, you're not going to get any joy from them. There's no blessing in those stolen goods. Proverbs 9 and 17, stolen water is sweet. Food eaten in secret is delicious. So on the surface, it seems like it's a good thing to do. It's yeah, the stolen water. It might be sweet at the time, but it's, it's going to be bitter in the end. It's the same with that food eaten in secret is delicious. So <clears throat> when we do things, we got to always think about the end game, right? So those are just a few verses talking about theft, um, which would apply to any time frame in the world, right? Whether you're dealing with ancient times or today's day, we, we, we know that theft is a problem. It's a sin. And of course, these things can be corrected with uh, repentance. Um, you can pay back. Um, and um, if anybody has any questions or a tea hole, do you want to add <clears throat> to this? No, um, nothing at this moment. I was just thinking if, if possible, if we can finish this one in time, if we can just maybe start uh, with the Daniel 9, and then next week we can then take another uh, law that we can deal with. And if there's any other thing that arises today, we can then uh, couple it with another law next week. Okay. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions? Comments? Anybody agree or disagree with anything I've brought up? If not, we can definitely deal with, um, you know, people are curious about Daniel chapter nine concerning um, that prophecy um, dealing with somebody coming up out of um, uh, the, the, the temple being destroyed and that there will be a, um, a Messiah who is cut off. So if we could deal with the context and the time frame of these things, um, I, I'm sure people are curious about that. So um, nobody wants to um, talk about theft, um, then we can get into that. Uh, Dave, is it possible to stop the recording and start it again for, for, for Daniel chapter nine? So um, yeah, we, just like start a whole nother class. Yeah, so that it can be easy for us to get separate recordings for these two uh, lessons. Um, the only thing is I know after I stop the recording, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to download and it's going to take time to download. I don't oh, know if I can have two screens five, open at the same time. time. Cut it. We'll cut it. I will edit and cut it. Okay. Uh, let, let, I can definitely try it. I can definitely try that. Hold on one second. Let me stop the recording.
me stop the screen share and I will stop this recording now.